I'm Lynn Samets. I'm the co-director of the Research and Instruction in STEM Education Network, otherwise known as RISE. I've been involved in the project since we started. We brought in a speaker for one of our events, John Bird, who's an environmental educator. And one of the things we did that day was walk around campus and look at where are potential places where we might put in a wetland. The goals of the Wetland Project are to install two natural ecosystems at two locations on campus that naturally treat water runoff and provide an environment to improve the biological diversity of plants, animals, and microorganisms. With the support of the Duke Energy Water Resources Commission and the provost, Dana Dunn, we're now seeing this project come to fruition with a planned installation of two wetlands, one in the Peabody Park Woodland area and the other in the Peabody Park Recreation Area. The area where the wetlands are gonna be installed are really important from a historical perspective, and we're also really interested in seeing how the installation of the wetland is gonna affect the local biodiversity. Ecosystems provide services that are beneficial to humans. When we've modified ecosystems, many of them lose that capability of providing the ecosystem services. So reestablishing wetlands or restoring wetlands is a way to improve water quality, increase biotic diversity, and since we're on the UNCG campus, can also be used as a research and education tool. These wetland areas are really good for the environment. The wetland that we're looking at here in the forested area is going to clean water from one of the dorm buildings. The runoff from the dorm building will enter the wetland. Uh, the water will interact with the animals and the plants living in the wetland and it will clean the water before it goes into the stream. But in addition to that, the wetland will provide an outdoor learning laboratory. It's really important for us to think about how this project incorporates in with what we already want to do. I envision these multifaceted ways to bring school groups to the wetlands, but I also envision um, thinking about this space as a productive space for teacher professional development. So I think that this can be productive for K-12 groups, for teacher groups, but also for our undergrads here who are learning to be teachers and our undergrads here who are learning how to be scientists. Greensboro Science Center partners with UNCG on multiple projects. We both believe in bringing science literacy to the community, and this wetland project just epitomizes that mission and goal. Partnering with an academic institution like UNCG allows us to bring together our audiences and really come together on the same theme and the same uh, values, science literacy, bringing education, bringing people into nature and wildlife. Something that makes this project really unique is it takes lab work, out into the public sphere. So these wetland features are things that anybody's going to be able to walk up to at any point in time. Um, and here we have a four-part definition of sustainability. We talk about social issues, environmental issues, along with economic, but we also have an aesthetic dimension. So while the primary group of faculty who have been working on the wetlands concept probably come out of education and biology and they're interested in certain aspects, it will contribute significantly, I believe, to the aesthetic um, sort of landscape on the campus um, and that makes it unique as well. This process has been going on for almost a year now. Um, once they had determined the two locations for the sites for the wetlands then they engaged and, and turned the project over to facilities design and construction. This is something that has never been done on our campus so we all are very excited about what's taking place. The installation itself will begin with basically excavation, removing the organic matter that's on the surface, any, any trees or sod material. There'll be an excavation down to about two feet, basically a depression in the ground. And then there will be um, packing the soil back in um, to help reduce any seepage out of the wetland. And then it will be shaped and smoothed out. There'll be plantings done after that. Um, and the planting process will probably take six months or more depending on when the optimal time to replant material vegetation is. It's been a pleasure working within this natural area and with the biology department over the past several years in developing different pollinators in, uh, in this natural area and working with the students and faculty and uh, people have donated their time to volunteer to do the planting. Uh, it will be a no-mow zone and, and we'll maintain the meadow around this wetland.
We started this with a very small core group of people, and now it's really just taken a life of its own, and people are asking to participate. Of course, we never tell anyone no. I'd really like to see the educational research and community activities that, that are coming to fruition become as long-lasting as the wetlands will themselves.